Hello guys, welcome to my video series tutorial to talk about Microsoft Semantic Kernel. In this video, I am going to talk about the new concept called Kernel Memory. First, we will understand what is Kernel Memory and what are the types available in Kernel Memory. Finally, we write one simple demo how to implement this feature. Microsoft Kernel Memory is one of the component in Semantic Kernel. The main purpose of Kernel memory enable the storage and retrieval of data using embedding, which are representation, capturing the meaning and context of words and other data. So what is mean embedding? Embeddings are numeric code that capture what words or things mean, commonly used in machine learning and natural language tasks to better understand and analyze information. Make it simple. Once you upload any images or any documentation, it's stored into this database, vector database to the numerical format. This concept we will talk about more details in upcoming videos. Here we just stick on this kernel memory only. The basics, how to implement this feature. The later videos, we talk about more on this concept. So you, here you can just understand the documentation and the, any images uh, is stored into the database in the numerical format. That's it. And kernel memory not only search the result, it's offering the response with a reference and direct links to the original source. So the kernel memory find the information, it's provide the information plus where the source come from. That information also it's provide. Variety of documentations, for example, you can upload Word documents, Excel, PDF, web pages also. There are two type of kernel memory available, one for serverless mode and another one is a service mode. In our serverless mode, the entire service is hosted directly by the running application. So you can just add this component into your application itself. The responsibility including generating embedding, storing them and performing searches also. Mainly here we used the simple DB and the serverless mode is suitable only for the small database, not for the large or complex database. So if you want to focus on the large data set or maybe complex data application, you can implement kernel memory in the service mode. The service operates separate instance. So it's running as a separate service. You can access you can access this service via REST API. And I mentioned this is recommended for the complex application. And you can host this service mode in Azure using app service. So let's move on to the Visual Studio. We write one simple application using the serverless mode. In Visual Studio, I have created a new project called the Memory Serverless Demo. The PowerRam.cs file, I just keep only the right line here, print the kernel demo and console.write. We are going to write the complete code sample here. And make sure you have to install the NuGet package, Microsoft Semantic Kernel Memory.co. This package has to be installed. Close this window. The next main thing is you have to use the OpenAI model called text embedding. This model you have to use to use this feature. I have already created this model. My deployment is embedding model and uh, use this text embedding RAS002 and version 2. So our basic setup is ready. We'll start writing the code. To implement this kernel memory concept, you have to use the kernel memory builder class. So here, I write the code where kernel memory new of kernel memory builder dot with Azure OpenAI text embedding generation. This function you have to use to embed your data. We are going to import one PDF file that should be embedded in start the application. For that, you have to use this one. Here, the first parameter, Azure OpenAI config, here we have to define our endpoint, model ID, all the information. For that, I'm going to create one static written type Azure OpenAI config, the function name create Azure open AI config so return new of 
Azure OpenAI config. Here we have to set all the required information. First API key. API key. I define my API key in the config file. So here API key. Next, I'm going to set the deployment config dot deployment. This embedding model as a deployment and uh, endpoint config dot endpoint. The next, we have to set the API type. So API type. Here there are different kind of API type is available. We are going to use this embedding generation only. So this API type. And the next important property is the authentication. This property also has to be set, otherwise it's thrown exception. So authentication, what type of authentication you are providing? I am using this API key. So I use this property. So it seems to be all OK. So we return it. Here I am calling this function like embedding Azure config calling this function. So here we have to pass uh, the settings. Next, we have to tell which database we are going to use. So here I am going to use with simple vector database, this one. Go with the default and finally build. So our basic setup is ready. We created a builder. The next step here, I'm going to import the one PDF file. Here I define my PDF file. This PDF file, I'm going to import to this database, this simple vector database. For that, we have to use the kernel memory dot import document async function. This function we have to use. So this is asynchronous function. We have to use a weight here. And uh, I change this also async and task. There are different kind of parameter available. I'm going to use this file path. So dot net dot PDF file. So here I define dot net dot PDF. That's it. We done the basic setup. The next, we have to send the query to the kernel memory to fetch the data. We cannot simply use this one, this API to interact with this model because this is only for embedding and it's used to create the index, numerical index for us. To communicate, or to chat with this memory, we have to use the chat completion API. So here we have to call with Azure Open AI text generation. This function we have to use. Again, this function need Azure Open AI config. We have to fill all the information. We can use the same API key endpoint and the API type going to change. Authentication we have keep this name only. So deployment and the API type is going to change. If I move to my Azure OpenAI Studio, here I created another one deployment, GPT-4 vision model GPT-4. This deployment I'm going to use for the text generation to communicate to the kernel memory. I need, I have to change this deployment and API type. These two I'm going to pass from here. So string deployment 
name next api type so just copy this one assign it here so api type i will replace with this one deployment going to change and the api type going to change here deployment config dot embedding model the next api type embedding generation for chatting we have to use a text generation so here i pass text config to this function and deployment deployment or model id api type this one is a chat completion this api type fine all set next we send the question to the kernel memory at the moment i, I hard code my question so here where a result equal to a wait kernel memory dot ask async using this api we have to send our question so i ask what is dot net this is my question rest of the parameter is optional parameter i leave at the moment once we get the response we print the result dot here a result console dot read we run the application and we get the answer based on our question so here i set a start up project start the application application has started these are all uh, some debug information leave this at the moment initially take time because it's import the file and it should generate the numerical format so initially it will take time here we get the result so some information i raise the question what is dot net here the result get printed and this time i put the breakpoint and the application again we sent our question what is dot net this function written the result i just go with quick watch here our question and here we get the result there is another property here relevant source if you go here we can see where this data coming from the source is a dot net pdf which we imported some other information available if there is no result available then this property is set as true no result we can check the conditions if it is a result available then process it if no result available then take other steps something like that there is a reason also available if the kernel memory not able to find the result so what is the reason that also in available here this is just a beginning how to use kernel memory in semantic kernel application later videos we talk about more on this concept thanks to all